In this tutorial, I'll demonstrate how to start with a photo of a harmless looking house and turn it into a spooky Halloween collage. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also download a written copy of this tutorial. I'm starting with this photo of a cabin, which is already pretty creepy, but nearly any picture of a house will do. By adding some easy photo effects, clip art, and layer manipulation, I can make this scene look downright haunted. I have a large collection of Halloween clip art in my organizer, and most of these images have transparent backgrounds. The clip art images used in this tutorial can be downloaded on this page in the Discovery Center if you want to try this yourself. I've also downloaded and installed the free Creative Content Pack, which contains, among other things, an autumn leaves picture tube. To prepare the scene, I'd want to remove anything that looks modern. There's not much here that reveals modern touches, but say I'd want to remove the top of the lonely looking pole next to the house. The clone brush is great for this. I'll set the brush size by dragging the mouse while holding the Alt key, and sample the background by right clicking. Then I'll left click, or drag, over what I want to paint over. Now let's make the overall tone more menacing. I'll choose Enhance Photo, Local Tone Mapping, and make sure that Preview on Image is checked. I'll increase the strength for more dramatic sky, then increase block size a bit as well. Now let's take this house back in time. I'll choose Effects, Photo Effects, Time Machine. There are several options from 1839 to the present, each with a short description of that era's photography techniques. Daguerreotype looks like a good choice, though later I'll still want to reduce the overall brightness. Before adding collage images, I'll make sure my Layers palette is open. If not, I could press F8 to open it. The only layer I have so far is named Background. Here's a gravestone image I'd like to add, but it has a white background and green grass. To isolate just the stone, I'll use the background eraser. With a high tolerance, I'll click and drag around to remove most of the background. Then I'll lower the tolerance and set the sampling to once and limits to discontiguous and remove the rest of the background and grass. Now with both images in my window and the grave image active, I'll drag its layer into the cabin photo. It's added as a new layer and now with the pick tool I can move rotate, or resize the grave. With the grave still selected, I'll press Ctrl-C to copy it, then use Ctrl-E to paste as a new selection. I'll do this one more time, providing graves for the whole family. Each grave was added as a new layer, so once all the graves are positioned how I want, I'll select all three layers, right-click and choose Merge, Merge Selected. It's good practice to keep layers well organized, so I'll change the name of this layer to Graves and keep the layer active. To blend the gravestones with the rest of the image, I'll apply the same daguerreotype effect. This graveyard is ripe for a ghost, and I have this image of a woman all in white with the background already removed. I'll drag her layer into the photo and use the pick tool to resize. I'll rename this layer Ghost and reduce the layer opacity. For a ghostly glow, I'll add a new raster layer and name it Glow. I'll use the airbrush tool with a white color, large brush, and about 15% opacity. Clicking a few times brings out the glowing effect. Layer order is important. I'll drag the graves layer atop the ghost and glow to hide the ghost behind the graves. Next, I'll open my organizer and drag up this raven image from the Halloween clip art set, then drag it into the photo and size and place. I'll do the same to add a bat. Both of these new layers need to be renamed. Then I'll select each layer, one at a time, and use Adjust, Hue and Saturation, Hue Saturation Lightness, to wash them out a bit. I'll bring in this full moon next.
To add a shine around the moon, I'll right-click on its layer, choose Properties, and in the Layer Styles tab, I'll check Outer Glow. Then I'll reduce the layer opacity. To lighten the mood with a splash of color, I'll add some leaves around the scene. First I'll add a new raster layer for the leaves. Then with the Picture Tube tool active, I'll find the Autumn Leaves preset and dot some leaves around the bare tree. By changing the scale, I can create leaves of different sizes. While this layer is still active, I'll use the Time Machine again, choosing the Early Color setting, to blend the leaves into their dark background. For the final effect, I'll add one more raster layer, called Mist, with 50% opacity. I'll go back to Airbrush, pick an orange color, and dot some wispy mist all around. By adding some darker shades, the mist looks even more sinister. The original cabin image could still be a bit darker, so I'll make that layer active, choose Adjust, Brightness and Contrast, Brightness Contrast. Reducing both adds to the overall evil look. With a well-organized set of layers, I can easily make adjustments to each element of the collage, such as making the ghost a little less opaque, or the mist a bit more opaque, and therefore more intense. When the collage is complete, I'll choose File, Save As. I want to save one version as PSP, so that the layers will be maintained, and I can make further adjustments later in PaintShop Pro. For an image that I can use in a design project, I'll save as a JPEG, which means merging all layers into a single layer. This brings us to the end of this tutorial on Halloween collages in PaintShop Pro. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also download a written copy of this tutorial.